All right, so we're proving another derivative rule. So I, I told you we're going to go through the list here and just use some of our advanced derivative techniques to show a lot of those elementary form derivatives. So here we're going to show that the derivative of log base b of x is equal to 1 over x times natural log b. And to kind of get this started, we're going to first recognize or just first note that when we say log base b, we're really talking about an inverse function. So So log base b of x is really the inverse function of the exponential b raised to the power x. So these are really inverse functions of each other. Um, all right, so we're differentiating it really, it's kind of not explicitly written, but this is really an inverse function. And so the way we differentiate or the way we prove this formula for a, an inverse function is using implicit differentiation. So kind of like what we did for inverse sine and inverse tangent, we're going to kind of do that same same strategy here for um, inverse the inverse exponential function or log base b. So we're just going to call this, give it a special name. We're going to call this, let's call it y. So we'll let y equal log base b of x. Then we're going to apply what are we going to apply? Well, we're going to apply the inverse function to both sides. So, well, we're going to apply just the original function to both sides. Because then we're going to get some canceling. So we've done this kind of thing before. We did it. Where did we do it? We did it with inverse tan. So we let y equal inverse tan, and then we applied the tan function to both sides, and then we got some nice canceling and ended up with um, kind of a, another equation where x and y were kind of flipped around. Did the same thing for inverse sine. So we applied the sine function to both sides, and there sine and inverse sine canceled, and then we had a, a new equation where x's and y's were kind of flipped around. We're going to do the exact same thing over here for... Um, the log function. So we're applying the inverse function to both sides. So when we do that, we're going to get b raised to the power y over here on the left. So let's write that in. And then because these are inverse functions, this exponential and the, the log base b function are inverses of each other, really what happens when we apply it on the right here is we're going to end up with b raised to the power log base b of x. And what happens is when, when they're right next to each other like this in a composition, they just end up canceling. And we're left with just an x. And that's a property of the fact that these are inverse functions of each other. So we're just using that cancellation property. So when we apply the exponential function to the right side, they cancel and we're left with just an x. All right, so now we have this equation, x is equal to b raised to the power y. Now this is where we differentiate, so we're going to differentiate this thing. And this is where the implicit differentiation happens. So we apply, we have our equation here. We apply the derivative to both sides. All right just like we normally do with implicit. Differentiate the x, just an x term. So we differentiate like usual, we get one. Differentiate this exponential function. We just saw how to, to do that. So derivative of the exponential function is the exponential function times natural log b. So this will be b raised to the power y times natural log b. So that's the derivative, but we're doing implicit differentiation. We just differentiated a term with a y, so we multiply that result by y prime. Okay. So this is looking pretty good, but now we need to convert back. 
so we need to we need to convert any y terms that we see we need to convert that back to x y prime is fine y prime is actually what we want but we have to get rid of this y term here and there's maybe a few ways to do this but if we look back we know b raised to the power y is actually equal to x So if we look back up here, x is equal to b raised to the power y. So this b raised to the power y, that's just an x. So we end up with 1 is equal to b raised to the, oh, just an x, times natural log b. And I need a little more room. So it's 1 is equal to x times natural log b times y prime. And then finally, we want y prime all by itself. So just take those terms in front and divide both sides by it. So we're just going to solve for y prime. And when we do that, we get y prime is equal to 1 over x times natural log b. And there we go. We just proved that result. Not too bad. And really, there's a special case here. So when this base b is e, our natural exponential, um, it's a special case. This is probably the one we use the most often. So when b is equal to e, um, just a few things here. Actually, let me use a different color. So when we say log, or when we say b is equal to e, the special case here, um, log base b would be of x would actually be just the, the natural log function. Um, or maybe throw in a, a second step here, log base e of x. We don't normally write this. It's fine if you do, but we don't normally write this. We call it a special name. We call it the natural log function. So when b is equal to e, log base b of x is just our natural log function then. And so what this result says is when we differentiate our natural log function, the derivative is 1 over x times natural log e, but natural log e is equal to 1. Which is then just 1 over x. So natural log e is 1. So we've kind of proved the more general result that for any log, uh, log function, log base b, its derivative is 1 over x times natural log b. And in particular, for the one that we use the most often, natural log, it's just 1 over x. So it's a little bit, little bit simpler. All right. So with that in mind, we know the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x now. And so we can look at this more general result that says the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is also 1 over x. So why is this the case? And ab absolute value is a piecewise function. So that means the natural log of the absolute value of x can be written as a piecewise function. So how is it piecewise? Well, this is actually equal to just the natural log of x if x is positive and it's equal to the natural log of the negative of x if x is negative. So we know just the natural log function without the absolute value sign, we can't plug negatives in. So if x is greater than zero, if x is positive, then the absolute value sign doesn't do anything. When we do the absolute value of a positive number, it's just the, the original number. But the way the absolute value works if we try plugging in a negative, is it just throws in another, puts another negative in front. So it's almost like doing a double negative. 
And so if x is less than zero, that means we're trying to plug in a negative number. What the absolute value function does is it says, all right, let's make that negative x. Let's make it a double negative. And that way we end up with a positive number going into this log function. So, you know, as a, for instance, natural log of absolute value negative two, if we go by this definition, we're plugging in a negative two. So negative two is less than zero. So we're gonna take the number we're plugging in and throw an additional negative in front. So this will be negative, negative two. So it's a double negative, which makes it positive. And that's what we'd expect. Absolute value of negative two should just be positive two. So this does check out. So this is how the absolute value function, or more specifically, the natural log of the absolute value function kind of works. It's a piecewise function. And it's important to note, no matter how we do this, the natural log function is going to be defined undefined at x equals 0. So only, this definition only works when x is greater than 0 or when x is less than 0. And so if x is greater than 0, when we differentiate that piece of our piecewise function, it's just the natural log of x that we're differentiating. So if our input x is greater than 0, the derivative of natural log absolute value x is really just the derivative of just the natural log of x, and we know that's 1 over x. So that checks out. Now if x is less than 0 and we want to differentiate this natural log absolute value x, well, what is it actually equal to in the case when x is less than 0? Well, it's this natural log of negative x. So we're really going to differentiate the natural log of negative x. And here we're differentiating, and it's a log function, and then there's not just an x inside the parentheses. So there's a little bit more going on here. This is really a composition. There's an outer function, which is natural log. And then there's an inner function, which is negative x. So whenever we differentiate a composition like this, this is where the chain rule takes place. So we got to use chain rule for differentiating the natural log of negative x. So how does the chain rule work? Well, we differentiate the outer function. So we basically do the reciprocal. So 1 over negative x. So we get 1 over whatever our inner function was. So 1 over negative x. We keep our inner function the same. And then we take that inner function and we multiply by its derivative. That's chain rule. Derivative of the outer function with your original inner function plugged in times the derivative of the inner function. And then derivative of negative x is just negative 1. So we end up with 1 over negative x times negative 1. And then the negatives cancel out. And we're left with just 1 over x. So it took a little bit more work to get there. But even when x is less than 0, when x is negative, we're seeing that the derivative of this natural log absolute value x is still 1 over x. Kind of, kind of surprising, actually. All right, so that does it. So what we've gone through is we've gotten to review a lot of our different differentiation rules. But what we've shown is if we know derivative of sine and cosine and derivative of e to the x, we can kind of prove all of these other elementary form derivatives using either product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, or using our implicit differentiation technique. Normally, we use the implicit differentiation when we're working with these inverse functions or these inverse exponential functions, which we call logs. Um, and then for kind of our trig functions, we're using either product, quotient, or chain and then same thing for our 
our exponential, our general exponential function, that was a chain rule as well. So a nice kind of review of a lot of our different techniques and uh, properties for these different functions. All right, so that's going to do it. In the next lesson, we're going to be investigating these log functions a little bit more. And we're going to see another differentiation technique that kind of uses some of the properties of these, these log functions. So we'll see you there. Bye-bye.